Welcome in everybody to another episode of ZB's Horsepower Talk. As always, I'm ZB, Zach Brown. We got a really good episode for you today, recapping all of the crazy NASCAR action at Talladega Super Speedway, NHRA action at the Midwest Nationals, and the World of Outlaws taking on the PA Posse for the first of two weeks at the Williams Grove National Open. Also joining us today, we got a special guest, Pro Stock Motorcycle Driver, Gianna Evaristo. So, let's get into it. Alright everybody, as we always do, we are covering NASCAR. A lot of crazy action out of Talladega. Very good races that we had uh, with the, uh, the truck race out. And the Cup race especially. So diving into the uh, NASCAR Cup Series race, it looked like it really could have been anybody's race. Uh, they were two, three wide consistently the entire uh, duration of the race. Uh, cars started getting loose and people getting impatient, of course. That's how they do it at Talladega. It was very exciting. Uh, obviously, all as always it does comes down to the last lap and out of nowhere kind of minding his business like he always does at his Talladega wins I think it was 17 one thousandths of a second Ryan Blaney beats out William Byron for the win I believe it was actually Kevin Harvick but Kevin Harvick was disqualified so William Byron actually gets second and uh, Denny Hamlin ended up third but Ryan Blaney with another Talladega victory photo finish Ryan Blaney locking himself into the round of eight. He's got a good shot, as any, to make it to the final four. What an incredible run that Ryan Blaney is having this year. It's definitely a career year for him. The furthest he's made it into the playoffs. Exciting to see. Uh, one of the fan favorites, of course. Uh, one of the quiet drivers in the entire uh, garage. Definitely cool to see him do that. Uh, especially with uh, his family's background in dirt racing. you definitely like to see that as well. Uh, but again, with another solid finish, Denny Hamlin is pretty much locked into the next round as well. I think he just basically needs to start at Charlotte, and he'll be into the round of eight. And looks like he's likely going to make it um, to the another championship four. Is this the year that Denny Hamlin can get it done? I don't know. He, he seems to always have some sort of luck at Phoenix or the final race of the season. Uh, and it's like the NASCAR gods got something against him and do not want him to win a championship. He's done it all. Um, so, I mean, that's really all he has left to check on his Hall of Fame resume as it is. Uh, can he be a NASCAR champion? Um, yeah, Talladega, super exciting. Um Wish I was down there on that one. This is the first one after two years in a row I was down there uh, that I missed. So, uh, sucks, but um, hopefully we'll get back to it maybe next year. I like to go over it in the spring and see uh, what the diff different atmosphere is from a playoff race to just a regular Talladega race. Um, touching on the uh, the truck series real quick at Talladega again it was really good racing uh, tight racing and uh, not as many wrecks as I expected not as many big ones as I expected one wreck that everybody is talking about is uh, Matt Crafton and um, uh, Nick Sanchez uh, Nick Sanchez he admitted he made a bad move and I guess kind of cut off uh, Crafton and they ended up crashing and and a fairly big crash ensued. Uh, Matt Crafton was not happy at all and uh, sucker punches Nick Sanchez after the race is done in the garage. And Nick Sanchez said his nose might be broken. He's definitely bleeding everywhere. Uh, but Nick Sanchez continues to make some aggressive comments on social media directed at uh, Matt Crafton. Can't be, can't be doing that. NASCAR finds both of them. Uh, Matt Crafton with the heftier fine and uh, Sanchez with the $5,000 fine. But uh, there's no there's no place to make threats on social media. That's where a lot of these younger drivers can get in trouble. They do stupid stuff on social media. And um, Coming from a profession where you're always looked at, you're always uh, criticized by the every little things you do, social media is for everybody to see. So 
you definitely have to use it wisely. Uh, I use social media, obviously, to promote this, this podcast and everything. Um, but you can't be doing it for uh, major negative reasons. It, it, there's, there's no place in that. I don't even like social media to go in uh, a political type of thing. I like social media to talk amongst people with the same interests and um, just as an escape from reality, not to give you more... Um, to think about and more stress and more negative thoughts about anything. I don't like to see social media used like that, but I mean, that's what this world is. I mean, there's always going to be the negative people in the world. I always like to have this fun platform. Uh, this is an escape for you, for me. Um, I tell everybody that, uh, people in my profession, they, to relieve stress, they go golf. Well, I can't golf worth a, worth a hell. So, I can talk about racing, and it helps me unwind, and it helps me get away, get a break from everything that's going on in the real world, and talk to you guys. And obviously, um, uh, I appreciate all the views and all of the uh, the support so far. Keep it up. Make sure you keep sharing with people. Um, I always like to see comments by anybody. Um, obviously, I've had the meme Mondays, and I put some. Definitely some wild things on there. Usually they're directed with the NFL, but I'll throw some racing stuff in there. And uh, it's just it, it's all fun and games. That's that's what it's all about. And uh, but if you want to comment on this video and uh, just kind of talk about what else you want to see out of this program, I'd really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, the, the truck series. Uh, Brett Moffitt gets the win. Uh, he, uh, I thought Chris Neckis was going to win. He dives up right in front of the high line. Gets out of line on the, I believe it's two to go, and gets real loose, gets uh, out of line, not basically takes him out of the con, uh, contention, goes right to the rear. Uh, Brett Moffat holds everybody off. He's not in the playoff race, but uh, Ben Rhodes uh, gets second. Uh, that's big for him. Uh, Thompson gets third, and Corey Heim gets fifth. So those are the uh, top playoff performers right there for the for the truck drivers. Uh, moving into, uh, they go to Miami here in a couple weeks for the, their cutoff race. So um, that will definitely be interesting for sure. See who will uh, move on from there uh, because a non playoff driver gets to win at Talladega. Definitely throws a little bit of a monkey wrench and more of a uh, focus on the playoffs. Uh, obviously, we have the Charlotte Roval uh, coming up. So we'll talk about that at the end of the episode with my uh, dad on Crew Chief Corner, as uh, we always do with that. But obviously, news out of uh, NASCAR, um, Iowa, Iowa Speedway is coming back. And it's coming back in a big way. Not just Xfinity races, truck races coming back. The NASCAR Cup Series is racing in Iowa next year. Thank you, NASCAR, for listening to the fans, listening to the drivers. This is what we've wanted to do. This is what we've wanted to have. It's such a great facility. It's a great area. There's nothing else to do in Iowa. You're going to get a sellout crowd. And IndyCar makes it a big spectacle. You guys need to do the same. Make it a big deal. It will be fun. I can't wait for it. I really want to go to it, but I don't know how to get to Iowa because, again, it's kind of the middle of nowhere. Definitely be watching for sure. June 16th, 2024 is when it's been announced. Also, the Brickyard 400 is back. NASCAR, you're doing things right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The stupid Indy Road course, I hated it. I was on my soapboxes about it, and we are finally going back to the Oval, listening to everybody. Now you're finally going to get people to go to the track. You're going to have almost a sellout crowd. I would say it's a little hard to sell out a crowd uh, for a NASCAR race at that because that's a lot of people that it holds. But you're going to get a major crowd there. Uh, now you bring the spectacle back. You bring one of the crown jewels back, so keep it. Don't ever think about going back. Leave it like it is. Even if there's some boring races, it still means a lot to these drivers. It means a lot to these fans uh, what the Brickyard 400 is. So awesome job, NASCAR, already with releasing some of the stuff on the schedule for next year. I wish you would move around the championship race. I hope the Roval goes away now next, and I'd love to see Charlotte Motor Speedway Bank of America 500, Saturday night, championship race. How freaking cool would that be? You're in the heart 
of racing country. Home track to most teams here. And you would pour in tons of fans to bring Charlotte Motor Speedway back to its prime. You could sell, you can build more stands if you needed to. This would be a huge deal. The Roval's all fun and games, but I think it was cool one time. Um, shoot, if you want to come to Charlotte a third time to do a Roval in the middle of the season, I'd rather have that than um, the Chicago Street Course. But I think the Oval at Charlotte for a championship race would be absolutely incredible. So, NASCAR, look at that, please, if you're listening. Please, 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 please. Definitely want you guys to be doing that. All right, let's recap the NHRA action at the Midwest Nationals and St. Louis. Uh, Big-time winners here. Shaking up some in the playoffs. Uh, you got Clay Milliken in the top few winning that. You've got Matt Hagen in Funny Car taking care of business, building himself up in third place right now in the standings in the countdown. Uh, Greg Anderson wins Pro Stock, so that's a big momentum builder for uh, for Greg as well. And shocker to nobody uh, in the Pro Stock Motorcycles, Gage Herrera gets another win, extending his lead in the countdown over Matt Smith. Uh, the biggest news uh, out of there, besides the winning, the winners and everything, uh, there was a scary crash in qualifying on Saturday with uh, Angie Smith. Uh, she's in uh, good spirits from what Matt Smith was, was saying. Uh, she's got two broken feet and severe road rash, um, but uh, it seems like she's going to be able to make a full recovery. Um so thoughts and prayers to uh, Angie and Matt and uh, the entire organization. Uh, definitely scary situation. If anybody hasn't seen it, it's definitely a scary wreck. And just glad that uh, her safety equipment and everything held up and did what it was supposed to. And uh, she's able to uh, come out of there and live to tell the tale for it. Um, moving on to the Posse versus the Outlaws at Williams Grove Speedway. Talk about a uh, major event. The, Nat- the Williams, Grove's Na- Williams Grove National Open. This is what I've said before. One of the biggest sprint car races in the entire country. Um, Friday night, they get to the feature. Starts raining. Why wouldn't it? Mother Nature wants to just do that. Thank you, Mother Nature. Uh, so Saturday they had to make up both of them. So they did the first. The first race was the Williams Grove National Open, seventy-five thousand dollars to win. What a freaking race that was! It looked like the guy that's always finished second in the Williams Grove National Open had this in the bags. Darren Pittman in the sixty-nine K making his debut for that team uh, looked real. No, not debut. His National Open debut for the team. He's raced I think one other one. But fantastic racing. He was driving it for all it was worth. But uh, Brent Marks would not be denied. Passes him late in the race to uh, secure his second uh, Williams Grove National Open. So congrats to Brent Marks. At least the posse wins the National Open. I- I- I'll keep. I'll yeah. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Uh, definitely for uh, for selfish purposes because uh, my, my grandpa Davy Brown works on the 69K. Definitely wanted them to win, but definitely strong showing for Darren Pittman uh, filling in for that. So uh, thank you, uh, Darren, for helping out that team and uh, to fill in for uh, definitely unforeseen uh, circumstances from the beginning of the season to uh, what they are doing now. So. Definitely uh, big uh, props to you. Sucks that you got second again, but um, hopefully you come back next year and get that uh, W for the 69K if you decide to do so. Um, I think that about wraps it up for recapping and everything. So let's go over my power rankings once again for uh, World of Outlaws and NASCAR. So let's start off with the World of Outlaws power rankings. And this segment is brought to you by... W Energy. Make sure you go to W.GG, use promo code ZBHP, get 10% off your order. Right here, I've got their blue raspberry flavor um, big energy tiers. Uh, go check them out. Again, W.GG, use promo code ZBHP, uh, great energy supplements there, and hydration supplements for every one of your needs. So let's get into it. World of Outlaw Power Rankings. 
Well, the top five from last week on the board and top five on this this week is back on the board as well. Number one, two, and three staying unchanged. Unchanged. Brad Sweet uh, consistently stay, keeping his point lead at 80 points over uh, David Gravel right now. So Brad Sweet, David Gravel, Carson Macedo, one, two, three power rank is one, two, three in the point standing. So no change in there. Shake up a little bit right now. Uh, Donnie Schatz moves back into the top five and moves in the number four position. And uh, Logan Schuhart drops down to number five after um, not the best runs at Williams Grove. Thought that he was going to have a little bit better luck uh, driving out of uh, Hanover, coming back to his home state. Seeing it, uh, surprising he didn't do as uh, good as he was going to. But uh, still, we're still staying in the top five after everything that he's been, um, all the success he's had throughout the year. So there it is. There's a World of Outlaw Power Rankings. So. Let's move into the NASCAR Power Rankings. All right, everything back up on the screen for you as well. Uh, the top two staying unchanged on this as well. Denny Hamlin stays at the top. William Byron moves down, uh, staying at number two. But look who has moved up in the top five and moved, propelled himself to number three. Locked himself in the round of eight. You earned yourself top three position right now. Ryan Blaney at number three. And looking at uh, number four and five, still got uh, Brad Keselowski at four, had some bad luck at Talladega, but still great runs, and Chris Buescher at five. Not enough to take them out. Uh, is teetering if I was going to keep Larson in or not. He's just outside the top five of my power rankings, but that's this week's power rankings for uh, NASCAR. All right, everybody, it's that time of the show. We've got a special guest joining us right now. Pro stock motorcycle driver from the NHRA, Gianna Evaristo from Team Scrappers Racing. All right, Gianna, well, welcome to the show. I appreciate you hopping on here. Um, I know you got a lot going on. It's a busy season for you with uh, three races left in the countdown, but definitely, uh, definitely cool that you uh, came on here. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, really great that we were able to finally make some time. I know we both have pretty busy schedules, but yeah, uh, yeah looking forward to it. Well, for people that don't know, I mean, there's there's a lot of people that know your family. You come from a very prominent uh, drag racing family, but for people that don't know you, uh, tell us a little about a little bit about yourself. How you got into racing and uh, kind of worked your way up to where you are now. Yeah, definitely. Um, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Gianna Evaristo, um, born and raised California. Um, I come from a pretty popular family in regards to racing in regards to popular in the sense of we love racing. Um, a third generation racer. Um, my father races top fuel. My sister races a fuel, um, she will be moving into top fuel next year, and I myself race pro stock motorcycles. With you racing pro stock and them racing top fuel, is there anything that you kind of want to jump into the top fuel and start making your way to that? Um, you know, I get that question a lot, actually, and I don't know. I mean, not to take anything away from that class whatsoever. I mean, the the speed and the the power, all that, that will always be in that class you know like that's amazing to me but there's just something about the bikes and the skill that it takes to be able to get the bike from point a to point b like all the races out here make it look easy and yeah. it's probably one of the most difficult classes that you have to you know i think it puts more pressure on you know the rider slash racer than any other class um because i mean we have to be hyper focused about everything in regards to like our leave from when we're shifting to where our feet placement are, our elbows, our shoulders, our head, all of it plays a huge role that I feel like a lot of that doesn't play a role in, you know, obviously the cars. Um, but I mean, it's a, it's a really fun class. It's, uh, probably one of the more dangerous classes, obviously. Um, but it's, uh, I love it. It's really fun. Well, talking about the dangers of it, uh, few years back you kind of had a, a bad crash and you were able to get up and walk away from that very fortunate 
Talk about uh, your uh, teammate and kind of mentor to you, Angie Smith, the legend in the uh, sport. She had a very bad wreck this weekend. First of all, do you know how she's doing and um, how uh, what's the road to recovery look like after a nasty crash like that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, she is probably, like, let me start by saying this. She's probably one of the most toughest people you will ever meet, just in general, not just in drag racing, but, like, in general. So, I mean, it's it really sucked to, and you know, a lot of people told me and it was hard cause I didn't really understand it until I experienced it with Angie. But everybody always said that, you know, obviously going through your crash is one thing, but then watching somebody you care about going through a crash is like a whole different thing. And, you know, I felt that, and that was something completely really difficult. And, you know, I experienced that with my sister as well. And, you know, that situation was difficult, but I mean, you know, she's doing really well. She's at home. Um, she has both her feet are broken. She has some pretty bad road rash. Um, you know, just like, you know, she got very lucky. Um, yeah. you know, we don't really have seatbelts, things like that. You know, obviously a roll cage, so our leathers are what protect us. Um, and her leathers, you know, did their job to the, you know, the, the full extent that they could. Um, but you know, she's in really high spirits. She's trying to move around. She's, we're trying to keep her, docile and not move around like <laughs> you can't move around on your feet so much but um she is just insanely tough um you know yeah. i've thought that i've met tough people in my life but she is just mentally and physically just there's no one else like her and um you know she's taking it slow she's going to take the time that she needs to recover but i definitely look forward to seeing her back out there hopefully next year yeah i shoot as a competitor i'm sure she's just dying to go back out there and race in texas here next week and uh yeah, I know that's that's definitely going to drive her crazy seeing her not be able to be on a bike. But, uh, yes, I'm, I'm sure she'll come back stronger than ever for uh, next year. Um, but talk about uh, the countdown and this year in general. Uh, this is definitely your most consistent year and I would say career year for you. Obviously, haven't knocked off any wins yet, but mm -hmm. you, the consistency has been there and the speed has been there throughout the entire year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, I knew that this year was going to be more of like a learning year for me. And it really seems like probably maybe all the way up until Indy, it kind of took everything to like come into play. And I kind of told myself that at the beginning of the year is like, you know, I was riding really great. The bike was doing really great, but we weren't really like meshing, you know, we just kept missing that spot. But now I really feel like the bike and I are one, like the bike's on it, I'm on it. And, you know, we're really finally starting to see some results and it's been really awesome to do that because we've really been putting in the time, the effort. And I mean, this year has been really great. I'm learning a lot, feeling really good on the bike. Being able to make those consistent runs is something that's super important, especially because I don't have as much seat time as, you know, some of the other racers out here. So just every race that I go to, I'm, of course, I want to go there and win the race. You know, that's every racer's goal. But um, this sport is so difficult mentally that it's really important to, you know, take the small wins where you can. So, yeah, I may not, you know, win the race, but I also will tell myself, okay, well, you know, I made really great qualifying runs. I made really great, um, you know, round wins, things like that. All my passes were straight, hit all my shift points. And just making sure that I acknowledge that I'm progressing, that's really important as well to me. And people that see the drag racing that don't really know a lot about it, they just see it's a, it's a straight line. It's the same dang track every single week you go to. But – with you going uh, from the Midwest Nationals and going into Texas here next week, explain just the differences from just going from that track to that track to that track and what you have to do to prepare to uh, be ready to be on your A game for those different types of conditions and the tracks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, that's just crazy. A lot of people don't realize that each track is different. It, each track has its own characteristics, whether it's a crown, a bump, things like that. And uh, weather also plays a huge huge role in our class um you know the more humid it is the more difficult it is for us to make power so that always plays a ro role with you know our tuner you know matt's you know has been around a long time a lot of knowledge so luckily we have a lot of data to go off of but um you know we're very lucky that we get to have an early test session the wednesday before this race for dallas so i'm really excited so you get to kind of get a feel for the track so that's always really nice um but i think it's going to be a really good race i i did pretty well there last year so i'm excited hopefully i can keep up the momentum definitely well somebody's got to get in the way to try to beat the guy that's 
won pretty much every race this year. And that's one of the uh, the craziest things is because everybody is good at this level of the sport. And when you see somebody do that, uh, just on that type of level every single week, and it's like, what, what do you see from the, uh, as a fellow competitor going against Gage and just like, what do we need to do to beat this guy? Matt's done it a couple times, but mm -hmm. just, I mean, sometimes it seems like Gage is the only time he gets beat is he gets beat by himself. So it's just, that's something that's really crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, just Gage is an amazing raider, excuse me, racer. Um, and he has an amazing bike and it's, you know, you put those two together and it's just, you know, a deadly combination right there. Um, and that's something nobody can take away from him. And, you know, he's earned every win that he's had gotten. And it's, it's been, it's been fun to be able to race against him. Um, you know, I beat him in Pennsylvania. I want to say second round it was, I believe. And that was a really big one. Um, and, but, you know, I also only beat him cause he had a, I think, a a really bad 60 foot something hey, happened i think they spun you, really hey, you know bad. what a win is a win and exactly, that's all you yes. need to say and and that's that's yeah. actually one thing my uh my dad brought up to me uh that week he's like hey guess who beat uh uh gage i was like oh wow that's awesome and i'm like well first of all, i was like somebody beat him and then i was like wow that's awesome and uh he'll be coming on later the show and i'll talk to him about that too but yeah um yeah that's anytime you get a big upset win like that that's awesome and Going back to your first win a couple years ago, talk about that. Talk about the emotions that went into that and uh, how that kind of started propelling your career forward. Yeah, you know, that was a really interesting year. Um, you know, I always tell everybody that I feel like this year is my first year of actually racing and that all the years before that were kind of just practice. Um, not to take away my win or anything like that or the hard work that I put in, but just the way I was riding back then just wasn't the correct way to ride. Just the wind was really weird. Just like every, it was a really weird day in general. I think in like NHRA history and everybody will acknowledge that. And I a hundred percent feel like that was very much luck on my side at that point. Um, yes, I did go ahead and do my job, but I think I won with, I think I ran like a seven twenty, and I think I rode pretty much the wall the whole way down um, so it was not a pretty win whatsoever, but I mean, you know, like I said, this sport is extremely difficult. So you take the wins where you can. Um, so, I mean, yes, it was an amazing thing. You know, it was kind of difficult. Cause after that I was like, man, I won my first year. So then I started my second year. I was like, why am I not winning? You know, like I already won one race, you know, and it, it kind of set the standard really high for myself, but you know, that gave me something to work towards, um, you know, the next year and the year after that as well. Uh, and this year as well. And, you know, I feel that I'm a hundred percent, a completely different rider. I was back then. And I know that a win is right around the corner for me. So, you know, I, I like to use it as a, um, a goal for myself to go through. Of course. And when you surround yourself with Angie, Matt, everybody on uh, team scrappers and everything that definitely has got to, uh, put some self-confidence in you that you've got the best of the best working with you as well. Oh yeah. And I mean, it's, it's been amazing. Just the amount of knowledge that both Matt and Angie have, is just, it's crazy to me. It's, it's a whole different level, you know, from just what I was doing before from my writing, everything. And, you know, they've, I've been really lucky to have this opportunity to not just, you know, ride with them, but they've been showing me how to work on the bike, things like that, you know, learning about tune-ups, things like that. And they have given they give it their all every single day, not just at the track. And there's so much that people don't see about them. And it's, you know, they're at the shop every single day, you know, working out, getting, you know, mentally fit, physically fit to be able to handle the bikes, things like that. And it's just, there's so much hard work that goes unseen, but it, you know, that's what it takes to get to the level that they're at. And, you know, I'm doing my best to do everything I can to mimic that because I want to be at that level. Where's uh, your shop located out of? Um, so they are in, uh, North Carolina as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm actually here with them. I've been, with, okay. I've been right. on the road with them. Um, that's why I'm here. Uh, cause it's just, it's just easier living in California to fly back and forth when we have three races back to back yeah. like that. It gets really difficult. Well, that, and, that, and that's one thing I've always wondered because I know there's 
you know, like Tony shops in Indiana and everything, but he's also got his NASCAR shop here in North mm-hmm. Carolina. It's everything seems to be spread out. Nobody really knows where the, the drag cars are located out of. So that's one thing I know a lot of people were uh, curious about. And so, yeah, Charlotte, definitely a uh, hometown race for the entire team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And most of the fuel teams are actually based out of Indiana. Um, yeah. So our, our top fuel teams there, um, the A fuel team was there. Um, so my sister Jasmine lives in Indiana. Um, and then I split my time really between California and North Carolina because we're here. Now, as uh, motorcycle, uh, the motorcycle drivers go, when there's three, was it three or four different types of uh, motorcycles you can have, like Harley, Suzuki, you have you have Suzuki, of course. But is that a feeling thing that, hey, I like this one better than that? Or it's just like, hey, this is what the team bought and this is what I got to roll with or a little bit of both or... Um, a little bit of both from what I understand. Um, so really our two options right now are either V twin or Suzuki. Yeah. Um, and like you said, I run a Suzuki, um, Angie runs a V twin, Matt runs now this year, he runs a Suzuki, but before he had a V twin, he had an option. Um, and a lot of it is really just performance wise. They're re- about the same. Um, you know, certain tracks you'll see the V twins perform a little bit better because, um, you know, like Denver, where it's really difficult for us to make horsepower with the Suzuki's V twins kind of compensate for that with the amount of torque that they're able to create. Um, but I mean, it's, I want to say it's feeling I've only ever rode a V twin once I did some testing on it. And personally, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, but I mean, I started on a Suzuki, you know, I was a lot smaller when I first started and usually the Suzuki's were for, you know, the lighter, smaller riders. Um, now it really doesn't make any sense because we're actually required to weigh more than the V twins. Yeah. But, um, so it's a little different, but when I started, I think we only had to weigh 600 pounds and I was about 15 pounds lighter. So I was a little bit smaller. So the V twin for me, uh, strength wise, I wasn't going to be able to handle it. Um, so, which is why we kind of went that route, but you know, it's really each rider is different, but I'm definitely open to the opportunity to uh, potentially move towards a v-twin later on in life well i won't take up too much more of your time a couple things three races left of the season uh what are you looking for in these next three races and then of course to get some momentum going into next year yeah um you know this whole end of the season just being in the countdown has really been surreal for me you know i grew up watching racing and seeing my dad compete in the countdown and you know, I had competed in racing and, but the countdown was something that I would never had the opportunity to do and not only just be in the countdown, but actually have, you know, be competitive is on a, a whole different thing. Um, so me, for me, these past three, excuse me, these next three races are really just trying to secure like a solid spot in the top half of the countdown if possible. Um, honestly, I don't really care where I end up. It's just, my goal is like top half right now. And I think if we keep the momentum, you know, we have a good chance of doing that. And, you know, more importantly, just making consistent runs and giving the last three races like 100% my all, doing everything that I can. Um, you know, coming from our last race, I'm a, I'm a little mad at myself. Um, I let the clutch out a little early second round. And, you know, I'm really frustrated. That's a really tough way to, to lose a yeah. race. I feel like I just kind of gave it up. And I was trying to cut a light and I just which I usually never tell myself to cut a light because I'm usually pretty good at that. And I just got in my head that race and it just, um, it got the better of me. So I'm definitely really fired up and looking to, um, you know, regain some traction there. So I'm really looking forward to Dallas for sure. And, um, I think that it's, uh, it'll be definitely a good race and then a really good next couple races. Well, we'd all wish you the best of luck, of course. Now to put you on spot, last thing, favorite track. Ooh, favorite track. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm a little, a little biased. I, I have like my two top favorite. Can I give two? Sure. Okay. Well, Sonoma, I love Sonoma because it's, uh, it's my home track. Yep. Um, and it's the bikes go super fast there, super fast. But also I have to say, um, Reading, Pennsylvania is probably my second or borderline like first. They're like tied, honestly, because I had my 200 pass there. Yeah, um, yeah, and that that's... was, the conditions are very similar to Sonoma. We run really fast there. Um, and that was, you know, I, that was just like a whole different level for me. You know, there's 
people that chase that number their whole career and then to have it happen within, you know, my fourth year of racing is just, it's unbelievable to me. And, you know, that's something nobody can ever take away from me. And just, you know, I know how hard and how long it took to get there and to get that number. So that is just a really special track to me right there. And then your dad goes and goes at 300 and the eighth. So I know, go. right? He steals all my glory, all of it. He's, <laughs> he's just like, no, I just got to one up you real quick. Just yeah, gotta, yeah, you know, of course. break a world record. <laughs> just create yeah, dad's got to do that, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, thanks, dad. Thanks. <laughs> well, Gianna, listen, as, uh, uh, as a woman in the sport, I have a uh, daughter. So uh, definitely you're, you're one that she's going to be looking up to here. I mean, obviously throughout when you were growing up you were watching angie and now you're with her so you're inspiring obviously the next generation of women in sports and in racing so obviously keep it up thank you for that and i'm excited to see where your career goes and where this uh the next the end of the season goes and where you can propel next season awesome thank you yeah i'm you know i'm I'm really excited and that's kind of always been my main goal out here is just to inspire people and to kind of show them the process and if I can do it anybody else can do it so really looking forward to that well appreciate you coming on the show anytime you want to come on you just let me know uh everybody's pro stock motorcycle rider Gianna Everisto Gianna thank you very much awesome thank you very much Zach have a great evening you too well, I really appreciate appreciate Gianna coming on here. Definitely a lot uh, we talked about there. I hope everybody enjoyed that. If you like that, you got some questions for her, make sure you drop it down below in the comments. Uh, make sure you keep hitting that like, subscribe, follow anywhere for the podcast. The next part, of course, we're gonna end the show like we always do. It's uh, we're bringing in him, bringing him in once again uh, for Crew Chief Corner. Crew Chief Corner, as always, is brought to you by Lickety Lou's All-Purpose Booyah Sauce. Make sure you check them out at LickityLou's.com or check them out on Amazon now. Link down below uh, in the description. Let's bring him in for a Crew Chief Corner, Jeff Brown. All right, Dad, welcome back in. We wrap up the National Open last week. Now we're on to uh, the Tuscarora 50 Makeup Day this week and uh, World of Outlaws, the the Nittany Showdown or something like that they call it, and uh, the Bank of America Roval 400 at Charlotte. Xfinity is also racing there on Saturday. So uh, big week of racing and uh, big cutoff races uh, coming up for NASCAR. Yeah, that's going to be uh, interesting you know, a lot of people don't don't like the Roval. I think that's pretty cool. You kind of get the best of, uh, you know, the road course, and you still get some of the high speed. Uh, you're going to see some chances taken, some hopefully some different pitch strategy. And, uh, you know, we got a, a couple of really good cars right now below the cutoff line and a couple right at the cutoff line. So I think it's going to be – that's going to be the race within the race, I think, to watch uh, – you know, who, who's doing what, who's coming, who's going. I think it's going to be pretty interesting. You're going to see it change throughout the, throughout the, throughout the race as it, as it goes. Yeah. I, I've see I see it every year in person because that's, uh, that's what I work. It's part of my job. And, uh, I don't know. I, there's not a huge crowd ever and nobody really gives it a chance. And I was skeptical at first, but I really enjoyed the, uh, uh, the races that have been there. And, um, yeah, like you said, get a little bit of uh, everything with it, and anything can happen. Especially uh, the last few years, it's been uh, tires have been the question. That have been the biggest thing, and that's uh, costed people their uh, playoff chances, and then people get in debris and things like that. That costs them yeah. their playoff chances, and uh, and bad luck too. That's also caught up with people as well. Yeah, it could, you know, just the way they have those curves and everything, and, and as fast as they go into the chicanes and stuff, you hit that curb wrong, uh, it definitely can damage some suspension, you know, knock toe out, this and that, and make cars handle handle way worse than what, what was happening. So you got to definitely got to take care of your equipment, take care of the tires, and, uh, you know, you got to be around, you got to be at the end there to win it. So and it's going to be these, uh, neat. And these cars, they are. Um... I would say if they can get out of whack pretty quick, if you, uh, 
hit them in a certain spot. Um, that's kind of what they're designed to do. Yeah, with you know the old car had a had the solid rear axle. You know you could bang that around. You probably weren't going to bend it. Now with you know the way they have the independent rear suspension, there's a lot more moving parts and a lot lot more um, areas to uh, for failure. So it you know you usually see when when the cars go out, it, it's usually uh, they they knock something out in the rear, knock the the rear toe whole way out, and they just you know they can't go from there. Yeah, well, this is a uh, cutoff race for the the Cup Series, and I think it I actually is as well for Xfinity. Um, um, let me check what their playoff schedule is. It's all weird with the three series how they uh, get the playoff. Um, and plus, NASCAR does not have the uh, best uh, way to look up a schedule. Their website's kind of out of whack. Um, let's look. All right, their round of, yep, it's cutoff race for all of them. So this is the cutoff race uh, for to go into the round of eight for both series. Okay. So yeah, like you said, there's a lot of chances are going to be taken. Um, Allgaier and um, John Hunter Nemechek are already locked in. Um, what what can you expect out of the Xfinity uh, versus the uh, the Cup series at the Roval like this? I think you're going to see more aggressive driving in the Xfinity cars. You know, those things are with the the carbon fiber body they have. Those things really actually can take a beating. I think you're going to, I think you're going to see quite a few cautions. I think you're going to see a bunch of hurt feelings. Might see a punch or two thrown after the end of this race. <coughs> Some of those guys that are below the cut line, it's either it's either win or go home. And I think I think they're just going to go. They don't care who's in front of them. They're just going to. They're going to run you over to win that race if they have to. The thing is, if uh, the Roval, they're not going to have a lot of cautions, but they are having the caution breaks now at the end of each stage. That's what they brought back. I like that because the restarts, especially at the Roval, are so exciting with that sharp turn one yeah. that they've got. So I think it's going to be pretty exciting. And like you said, there anything can happen. Um, but, uh, yeah, like – well, like we always do, let's head into our picks, and then we'll kind of talk about the uh, the schedule has just been released for uh, NASCAR. I want to go through a few things with you, uh, see what you think about it. I already touched on, like, uh, Indianapolis and Iowa and everything for next year, but let's go to our picks, and then we'll kind of uh, see what your opinion is on that uh, NASCAR schedule for this uh, for next year. So uh, Xfinity is, um, like I said, this is the cutoff race for them. Um, and it's road course slash oval, but I mean, you have to be pretty, uh, road course savvy to get through this place. Yeah, so yeah for your... sure. It's, uh, and I think it's going to be survival of the fittest thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was going through it. I really sort of went through who I thought had a pretty good chance to win. I, I'm going to think Algar and John Hunter are probably going to go balls out and have a really good shot, but in the end, I'm going to go with Josh Berry. He has not won yet this year. I, I pick him. Soon. Come on, Josh. You got to got to hook me up here on this one. Well, I haven't been uh, the best luck for him as well when I've picked him uh, or anyone, um, except John Hunter. That's been pretty much. Hey, if you pick yeah. him, you're probably going to get it right. That's a low uh, I'm going fruit with. There. <laughs> I'm going with uh, a, um, one of the expanding drivers. Very good on the road courses. Um, has got a couple wins this year. Very fast overall, definitely in contention to win the championship. I'm going with Cole Custer. Yeah, that's a good pick. And uh, going into our uh, Cup Series race on Sunday afternoon, uh, this is, uh, again, another one I think for sure is going to be one heck of a battle. Yeah, I agree. You know, I, the ones that are, you know, just one or two spots above the cut line and, and the four below, I think – I mean, I think it's going to come into play. Everything that that they're going to do, there's going to be pitch strategy, which which actually makes the the stage breaks nice. I originally, when they said they weren't going to do it in the road course, I was a fan of that until I saw the road course and how boring it was. You know, it's just with these cars, you, you just got to have some cautions. So hopefully, we get enough cautions, see some uh, different pitch strategies, which which makes things a lot more exciting. You know, it's like are they going to run out of fuel? Are they going to run out of tires? You know, the caution comes out the wrong time. You know, if you're in the pit lane, the caution comes out the wrong time. So I think it's going to be fun. 
Uh, in the end, I that was another tough one. This guy's been fast on road courses. A lot of times he screws himself up, but I'm going to go with Tyler Reddick on this. All right. Um, that would be big for sure. And it looks like Denny Hamlin's likely going to be locked in. He's basically much, just got to yeah. start the race. He's 50 points ahead. I, I, I don't think there's any scenario where he won't get in unless he just doesn't want to make the trip can, down the road. I don't, yeah, I don't think you can lose 50 points. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think so. Unless there's some big penalty or something crazy, but uh, I'm looking, um, yeah, I'm looking at a driver that he's kind of notorious for going really well at these mixture of oval slash road course races. Uh, he won the uh, Daytona uh, road course race a couple years ago. Um, he's won the road. I think he's won the oval before, or been contention to win these yeah, races. The you sure. know who I'm picking. Yeah. Uh, I'm going with Christopher Bell in this one. Yeah, <laughs> and. Uh... Mom said she's picking Kyle Larson to lock himself she in. She needs to stop. <laughs> Jinx him. Uh, I, I, I do think Larson, if he don't win, I do think he'll point his way into the next round. Uh, if he doesn't have bad luck, he he was, what, like 30-something points ahead a couple years ago when he won the championship. He, he had so uh, much bad luck, he actually fell out of it and came all the way back and had to win the race and got in. Yeah, yeah, that was probably one of the most exciting robo races where he came out and had the belt fall off the oil pump. Yep. And how Things that, that don't they happen. caught it quick enough that it didn't blow the engine up, put a belt on that thing, and it comes back and, and just tore through the field. Yeah. You know, that's with the old car. He hasn't been quite as good on the road course as with the new car. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, that does it for our NASCAR picks. We're going to roll into the uh, – uh, actually, I want to talk about the uh, – the NASCAR schedule real quick with you that just got released. See what you think about it. I said it to you today, but uh, the schedule for uh, the 2024 season of NASCAR has been released. Uh, I talked about it uh, early on in the show. The thing stood out for me, obviously, the Brickyard going back to the Oval and Iowa getting a Cup Series race next year. Um, what, what are you seeing on it? Well, the one thing I noticed is what's not on it anymore is uh, Fontana's missing. From the beginning of the year, they're reconfiguring the two-mile track to a half-mile. I, I don't agree with that. It's a shame. That was actually a pretty good race the way it was. I, you know, hopefully if they're going to, they should have built probably a three quarter or seven eighths mile. I would think that if you're going to run those big of cars on it, uh, it depends on the shape. I mean, it, it could be, you know, I, I like short tracks, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. That's really, I mean, they had to got just got a ton of money to get rid of all that land. The only thing I can think yeah, of. Yeah. Well, the problem the problem with the short tracks is that this car has not been able to run well on a short track yet. Yeah. Uh, Bristol was better this year on in the night race, but um, for just run the mill short tracks, it hasn't really been good. Yeah, Bristol's fast enough that it you know it's small, but it doesn't you know it doesn't really race like a short track. Uh, and you point out that Darlington is going to be the the last race before. Uh, the round of 16, so that, that's kind of interesting. And then the, uh, the well, we got a good two-week break for when the Olympics are in July, from uh, July 22nd through August 10th. So, And I think, honestly, that's really good for the drivers, too, to get oh, in the way, so. and they can get a little bit of a break in. Uh, and um, I'm not... I'm not sure if there's like an Xfinity race during that. They might have something during that. But I, I think I think having that big break that 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 should be out every year some sort of break for those drivers, those crews. I mean, they really grind it out like 40 weeks out of the year. I mean, it's pretty crazy. And uh, it, 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 I'm sure it has to do. NBC is doing the Olympics, so I'm sure it's mostly for the TV. Uh, Texas only has one race. Uh, they're back at the Chicago streets. That was a better race than I expected to be last time, so we'll see how that goes again. Uh, most everything is the same. Uh, they did keep the Charlotte Roval. There was some speculation that was going to be gone. So, uh, All-Stars back in North Wilkesboro. Hopefully, they do a little something with the, the track surface. Uh, they definitely need to get it to where there is more grooves. I mean, Larson's the only one that figured out how to pass anybody the last time. So that that's going to be different for sure. Yeah, maybe maybe add some PJ one or something to need it. To do, need to do a little something to try to get 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 more passing than just the one car. I mean, it's great if you're a Larson fan like us, but 
everybody else thought it was a terrible race. So yeah, so, and, uh, yeah, it'd be neat. I, and, I wish and, they wouldn't and, do the clash out in L.A. No, you know they got to drive the whole way to L.A., run that stupid race, come the whole way back to Daytona. It just takes away what we know as the Daytona Speed Weeks, and I always yeah. enjoyed that. That's, I mean, that's where racing got started. But if you're uh, gonna do I don't it. need to get on my horse about L.A. yet. That will be for the next season <laughs> when we start. Um, Put it uh, when they're already heading out for a Western Swing. Throw it in, you know. I mean, I know they wanted to do it before the season. Okay, I, I, you're going to get me started on my high horse with it. <laughs> So <laughs> I was just say, or you just don't have it at all because you just, well, it's just a waste of money. Yeah, I, I agree. But, but anyways, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I think it's a better schedule than it is this year overall. And I don't know, Darlington might be almost more of a crap shoot than uh Daytona. I think the Darlington race. has the cutoff race is, uh That's, that's exciting. Cause and that, it's still Labor Day. We, there. It's still Labor Day weekend because they had to take that two week break for the, uh, uh yeah. for the Olympics. So, um it'll be interesting for sure uh i'm yeah. looking forward yeah. to that but uh yeah we got a couple more races this year to finish off and uh closing in on the end of the uh world of outlaws as well uh, again we're in the final month stretch now yeah and uh the tuscarora 50 uh the rain date is uh actually thursday night this week and now there's going to be some more names that been added to it. Uh, Rico Abreu has just been announced that he's been added to the Tuscarora 50. I don't know if he was going to race it before, but he is uh, confirmed to be there. And I think the, some of the outlaws that haven't already raced their non points races this year that you'll see them as well. Um, shots, Macedo, uh, Tanner Holmes, Brock Zierfoss for sure. That, are all going to be there. Would yeah. not surprise me to see Kyle Larson. They just, you know, they, they just raced in New Jersey last night. I was waiting so to only... see. Uh, yeah, I was waiting to see if Sherry put anything about Larson or something about Larson getting confirmed. I haven't seen anything yet, but yeah, I would not be surprised. But uh, all three races are at Port Royal this weekend, um, and then it goes into the actual Outlaw Points races. The I think it's called the Nittany Showdown. If I'm not, uh, if I'm Probably. not wrong about that. Um, so you can take the you got the score fifty. They added it's sixty thousand dollars to win. That's huge, um, and we've talked about it before. We talked about uh, how prestigious this one is. I mean, national open was just last week, and I think this is right there with the uh, national open with prestige. Yeah, I think so. The the track it loses a little bit of the luster because it's not the fair there anymore. It was always kind of neat having the fair going around with the you know, see the Ferris wheel and everything in the background. Made it kind of neat. Going to hurt a little bit, probably crowd-wise, just being on a Thursday, Thursday night. So hopefully they push it through and don't, you know, don't want to run late, you know, because, you know, Port Royal is right in the middle of town. There you see the houses along the backstretch. So for sure you're not going to want to run that late. But, yeah, for 60000 to win, you know, that's what, fourth or fifth biggest paying sprint car race in, in the country. So yep. that's, you know. That's pretty awesome, and and Port Royal facility is is quickly becoming one of the the top facilities in the whole country. I'd I'd say it probably surpassed Williams Grove for sure, as far as the upkeep and uh, the yeah. money they're putting in into the track to make everything a little better. I would say so. I mean, when I had uh, Justin Snyder on earlier this year, he talked about how much uh, projects they were able to get done. It was a blessing and a curse that COVID happened, but they were able to get a bunch of stuff uh, finished up that they had on their uh, plan for that year. Um, so we've made our picks before for the Tuscarora. I, I say let's do it again um, just because there's a bunch of new names added and it could really be anybody's, uh, race now. And, uh, but before we do what, um, what can you take racing after the Tuscarora this week in your mind, from your perspective to carry over to Friday, Saturday, it's not a 50 lap race for Friday and Saturday. So it's a little bit different and this doesn't usually happen. So, uh, how would you kind of approach this week? Wait. Well, the, the formats are going to be a little bit different. Thursday is, I believe, all-star rules. I think they're still advertising it as an all-star race, even though it is not a point race. So the rules are going to be a little different as far as uh, all-stars. You, you get the fastest qualifier and the heat race winner go to the dash, where the outlaws, it's the top two, go to the dash. I, I believe it's how that goes. 
So, you know, outlaws, you, you don't necessarily want fast time. You know, you, you know, you get to where you're, you know, fifth, sixth quick start on the front row of your heat. You got a really good shot where, you know, all stars that you either want to be on the front row. You don't want to be like start third. <laughs> so, but as far as the track, the, the, you know, port does a pretty good job. You know, if, if you can find something Thursday night, you, you got a good baseline to go, to go off of. And <laughs> the kids have kid problems. <laughs> all right, she's coming on the show. That's all right. <laughs> all right. She was rolling out of her uh, whole chair, so. Um, but she enjoys the uh, sprint car racing. But uh, yeah, I I think it's going to be a exciting uh, three days. Um, but let's uh, let's get into our picks. Um, uh, who do you want to pick? <laughs> Uh, and uh, so, all right, Thursday night for the Tuscarora 50. Um, again, it's kind of up in the air at this point with um, everything uh, going on with a couple outlaws racing and uh, still some of the all-stars are coming. The uh, I'm pretty sure Sunshine and uh, Zeb Wise, all, all the marquee yeah. uh, drivers. Yeah, the, the big all-star names are going to be coming. And uh, this week, whoever's keeping up, it is Logan Wagner back in the 69K for the Port Royal Races. Uh, Pittman last week. <laughs> so just to keep a tally, we got Logan Wagner back in the car. Uh, for the Tuscarora 50, you talked about him. He's he's confirmed coming, and he's been one of the hottest drivers. I'm going to go with Rico Abril on this one. I'm going kind of a shot in the dark, um, and this is kind of a play on words right here. Um, but he's won the touch score, uh, I think, at least once when it kind of rained out before. Look for him to be shaking it up. I'm going with Donnie Schatz. Okay. See, shot the dark shots. I gotcha. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the go. only other time it was, it was a, it was an outlaw sanctioned race, and he did he was the winner of that one. Yeah. So I, I what, what in the world is that? <laughs> what? What's this? <laughs> All right, chaos. I live in chaos, everybody. <laughs> when they invade, yeah, you're all right. All right, and uh, Friday, Saturday night, outlaw rules and outlaw points races. So, uh, and we were talking, yeah, it could be Larson coming to these races. Would not be shocked. Everything, and it's an hour flight to get, uh, hour and a half flight to get to Harrisburg to Charlotte. So, yeah, not a big deal. Well, to Concord, where the, they'll he'll just get a private plane. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked. Somebody who's got one. Yeah, somebody. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, Friday night, first outlaw race, and uh, who you got on that one? Uh. I'm going to go with the outlaw point leader, Brad Sweet. He's been slowly pulling away, and I think he continues that. And it seems now David Gravel's right on his heels on these last few races. So that's what uh, – that it's it's he's trying. He's trying everything he can, but um, Brad Sweet's going to have to have some bad luck for it. Uh, I'm uh, I'm looking for the guy I just talked about, uh, David Gravel, and uh, he's going to have to get some wins or the points race is pretty much it. Um, all right, Saturday. Okay. Uh, this guy has been coming on strong. Picked up a win just a couple weeks ago at Williams Grove. All-time leading feature winner at Port Royal. How do you not go with Lance DeWeese in the 39M? Second. He's still second. Oh, that's right. He's second to Kaufman. That's he's right. number one at Williams Grove. Williams but Grove. He's only got he's got like six or seven behind Kaufman. Yeah, I think he's going to get one closer. I'm going the former ride for Lance DeWeese. I think the uh, PA Posse is going to finish out uh, strong and uh, send the Outlaws home. Uh, Brent Marks got the National Open. Uh, let's get the Nittany Open or Nittany Showdown. Let's uh, see uh, the 69K of Logan Wagner win. This is uh, his best track by far. Uh, only track, as far as I know. I, mean, he's but, uh, I, I was talking to Dad yesterday. He thinks it's probably going to rain on Friday. So just... Uh -huh. And he said that's okay because he, he he gets he's he said he's old and he gets tired. He would like one day off between Thursday and Saturday. Yeah, especially <laughs> after a big Tuscarora 50 day. Um, but there's always a chance of rain with Port Royal. It's in the middle of the yeah, mountains. It's up in the mountains. So, yeah, so it's really hard to predict the weather. Um, but I think that's all we got. You got anything left? Hmm? Yeah. Hmm? What do you say? <laughs> I think that about does it this week, Dad. Um, and. Uh, 
Hope everybody enjoyed this. Hope everybody enjoyed Gianna coming on earlier in the show. Uh, keep on lookout. We're trying to get some more guests. And uh, if you comment down below, let us know what guests you think we should try to get. Uh, be reasonable because there's only certain people we could potentially get, not like certain like champions. Uh, there's no way I could get like Dale Earnhardt Jr. on here right now. But um, yeah, who, anybody got yeah. any names? Send them if out. You're, you're a driver, you know, car owner, crew chief. If you're yes. involved in racing, Spotter, somehow, that's driver, okay. driver. You know, we'd love to hear you know your take on on your racing series. Yeah, and if you're involved it, in I mean, racing, sprint cars, asphalt, drag racing. We do a little bit I of everything here. So it that's, don't matter. We'll, we'll talk about anything. Well, we do a little bit of everything, and the, and this is one show that doesn't do that. Not a lot of shows are like unscripted and talk about literally every type of motorsports. You don't see it that often. So that's what we enjoy. That's what I enjoy doing. That's what you enjoy doing. And we talk about a little bit of everything. That's uh, how we get through our pastime. So, um, yeah, make sure you like, follow, subscribe, hit that little notification button anytime new episodes get posted, and follow anywhere on social media and anywhere you get podcasts, everybody. Uh, appreciate everybody uh, tuning in, and we'll uh, see you next week. I'll see you, Deb. Right. Bye. Bye, princess.